Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's Excel Quick Trainer, we're going to discuss Excel Basics, the application layout. This is video number two of a planned playlist of training videos for Excel. The target audience is science students to get you up to speed on Excel quickly. First up, what does Excel look like? So first, we have the window title bar up here at the top. Then we have the menu bar. Then we have the toolbar. Then we have the formula bar. Then we have the grid, followed by the worksheet tabs, and finally, the status bar at the bottom. Next up, the Windows title and menu bars. So up here in the Windows title bar, there's an autosave feature for every workbook, and you should generally click this on. I'm not gonna, but if I were to click it on, you have to have either OneDrive or SharePoint Online to save those, and if you don't have either, then this will be disabled. So as long as you have one of those services, online services, then the autosave will work and you should activate it to save your work automatically. There's a save button, a little three and a half inch floppy icon. You can click that anytime you want to save your work. There's undo and redo. Let's go look at those. Notice they're both disabled. Let's go put some values in here. And notice that the undo now has some options. So I can undo, ooh, G went away, column G value. Undo again, undo again, undo again. And I can redo, 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 redo all the way out to the end. So you can do them one by one by clicking the button or you can do the drop down and I could roll it all the way back and only leave column B. Oop. I can roll it back even further. Now everything's gone, it's back to normal. Or I could <laughs> redo it all. So the undo redo has a history pretty neat. Uh, next up is, eh, you'll never use this, customize quick access toolbars. Very specific if you want to configure buttons and do stuff, but that's pretty advanced. Uh, p -p 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 hmm. Apparently you can do a search. I don't do it that way. We'll look at search later and there's a different way that I do it. This is an interesting button, the ribbon display options. There's three. You can auto hide. Now watch this. So notice the button, notice the auto hide. And you can get yourself really confused. Ah, where'd all my buttons go? How do I get it back? Well, find the same button and <laughs> click it again and go back to this. So there we are, back to the start. So I never use that, but you could if you want a whole bunch of uh, real estate and get rid of all this vertical space that's used up. This one I use from time to time, the show tabs. But I never usually do it from here. Usually, well, we'll see later. I, usually I do it down here, collapse, and then I have to come back and show them all. But anyway, there's that. And then there's the, of course, the normal, maximize, and minimize buttons. Next is the menu bar here below the Windows title. And it defaults to the home menu with the toolbar down below. You can move to the insert, and the toolbar changes. Move to draw, and the toolbar changes, and so on. And I'm not going to go through all these right now buttons. There's a lot of them. But I just want you to recognize that you use the menu bar, to change around what tools you have access to. So the home, insert, draw, all these menus are the same. They just switch the toolbar out, but they leave the grid, formula bar, and everything else alone. The file menu is totally different. Watch what happens when we click the file menu. It completely changes the screen. Now from the file menu, you access your new, opening a new blank workbook, hit control N, or click this button. You can open an existing workbook or hit Control O. You can save or save as by clicking this. You can print. It's the only way you can print or hit Control P back at the main uh, page. And here under more, you have all your options. And there's a bunch of stuff you can do with the options. I'm not going to go into them now, but that's where your options live. It's on the file thing. Next up, the toolbar. So on the toolbar here, most of the buttons you're going to be using all the time are on the home or default toolbar. And you'll use the other ones sometimes, but not as much. I'm not going to review all of these, but uh, notice that you can hover. Let me click on and get the focus back to this application. You can hover, and it'll tell you what the button does. Bold, italic, fill color, font color, make the font bigger, etc. So if you're wondering what anything does, hover over it and it'll tell you. Also. Note that there's these little pop-up buttons that'll give you a whole bunch more details in a dialog. So that was the font pop-up. And if I do this one, 
It'll give me the alignment pop-up. I was just on the font pop-up. Now I'm on the alignment pop-up from there and so on. Uh, it looks like just these guys have it. Uh, oh, this is important. If you ever hit the collapse button, that's buggy. There we go. That's what it's supposed to do. It got stuck there for a minute. It'll collapse the toolbar. It disappears. You have the menu bar. You have the formula bar, but you don't have the toolbar anymore. So it's gone. So there's two ways to get it back. One is to click a menu item and click the little pin to hold it. Or if you roll it up, you could do that uh, Windows title bar option that we saw earlier. Either way, we'll get your, your toolbar back. Next up, the formula bar. Formula bar here consists of a name box, which we're going to ignore for another video. Just note that whatever cell I'm in, cell A1, there's A1, I moved to D1, D1. That's all we need to worry about there. And there's a splitter bar. You can make it wider or narrower. And quite frankly, there's splitters everywhere. I go off on a quick tangent. So that's a splitter. This is a splitter. This is a splitter to make your row height bigger on a given row. This is a splitter to make your column bigger. There's lots of splitters. Uh, this right here is a splitter. Lots and lots of splitters hidden all over the place. These aren't splitters. You can't mess with those. But anyway, just hover the mouse pointer, and when you see it change to arrows like that, that's a splitter, that's a splitter, etc. So just be on the lookout for splitters. Back to the formula bar. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and enter some values. Two, two, and then we're going to make a formula here. Equals this cell plus this cell. Hit enter. Two plus two is four. Now if I go back here, oops. If I go back here and I click into the cell, I want you to notice a couple things. I want you to notice that A1 is in a blue font and that same blue color is right there as a back color. And B1 is in red and it's got a back color. And it'll do that out to several different colors, five, six, eight, ten different colors. It just helps you trace easily with your eye what cells go where inside of your formula. I also wanted to demonstrate these two buttons in the formula bar. So let's say I typed in a bunch of stuff, oops, and I want to undo it. Just go to the red X and that'll cancel your entry over here and everything goes back to normal. Or if I want to add 32 to it, I could hit the enter key or I could hit the green enter, which will save the change. So that's what those two buttons do. Next, move to an empty cell and click the FX button. And you get the insert function dialog. And this is very powerful. Uh, this wizard will walk you through using any functions, prompting you for uh, cell and reference values that you need to enter. And we'll go through this in greater detail in a future video. But the takeaway here is that the FX button in the formula toolbar is what pops up this dialog. Oh, and one important note about this formula bar is that you can expand it. So if you have a cell with a formula that goes way beyond what you can see, maybe it's scrunched down, you can always grab this splitter and make the formula bar bigger. And then you can look at it, know what you need, and then when you're done, click it. And you can always do this too. You can click the buttons here, or you can get the splitter, ah, there we go, the splitter and make it whatever height you want. This is a toggle which is one line and X lines, and you define X lines by dragging it with the splitter, and then use the toggle. So that's a helpful trick for viewing the entire formula. Next up, the grid. This is the grid where rows and columns exist. Rows are numbered here vertically, columns go to the right, columns all the way out to XFD, I think there's like 16,100 and some, and rows, there are 1.04 million rows. Spreadsheets are pretty big nowadays with available RAM that's out there. Uh, this is where all the data and the formulas and the formattings, etc., resides, is in the grid. To select, you can obviously click with the mouse pointer. You can move around with the arrow keys. You can select a range by clicking, holding down the mouse pointer, dragging that selects a range. You can also click and use the shift key and the arrow keys, going down, going right, 
two different ways to do selecting. There's a right click context sensitive help. I could right click here and I don't know what I want to do. So any formatting, I could sort it. I don't want to do that. Anyway, there's a lot of different options in the right click. There's the format cells. Off the screen, come back and maybe make the font bold. All from the right click. Context sensitive help. There's a vertical scroll bar here. This is the thumb. This little guy here that I'm moving. The thumb gives you relative size of the document. So that thumb is about two, three, there's about four of those thumbs. So as I drag down or page down by clicking in the gray area between the thumb, and we jump to the bottom. So there's vertical scroll bar, it's also part of the grid. Oh, what do we want to do? Type some data in. You can type numbers. You can type text. My keyboard's broken. It has the right arrow key. Jumping over there. We'll do the text next to it. Uh, what else? Can we, ooh, man, that key is getting stuck. Oh, and this is the last thing I wanted to show you. It's pretty important. Let's make the cell a little bit bigger. And let's type in some text. Line one, blah, 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 blah. What if I want to go to a line two? Now, sure, I could hit enter, and I could enter line two down here. But what if I don't want to do that? F2 to edit, shift home to highlight, control X to cut it. What if, instead, I want the second line to be part of the same cell? This is important. Use the Alt key and the Enter key. And then I'll paste what I had in, and there we go. Now notice, line one and line two are all inside of cell F3. And I could hit Alt-Enter several times. I have a much wider line. Hit F2 to edit. There's my cursor. I'm editing inside using the down arrow key. So that is how you do multiple <clears throat> lines within a cell. And that's handy sometimes when you're, I don't know, if I had bug one, two, three, four, and some text, and some text, and some text. I, of course, oops, ah, my key. Control home, jump back. My uh, right arrow key gets stuck in the down position and just starts scrolling. Time for a new keyboard. Uh, let's go ahead and click this. It's not a column, it's not a row, it selects everything. Or you could hit Control A key to select everything. Although the Control A is just selecting everything it's aware of that's part of my document, which is really just the areas that I've changed F through row 60. But control home. I'm going to do this guy, select everything. What was I going to do? Uh, well, that's. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Notice how these are vertically centered at the bottom. I go back up to the toolbar and where is it? Middle of line, top of line. There we go. Now they're all top of line, look nice. And I used Alt Enter to get multiple lines entered on that particular cell. And finally the worksheet tabs and the status bar. So the worksheet tab section down here, well it has a horizontal scroll bar so you can scroll and see the columns that are off screen, but it also has the worksheet tabs. Uh, right now there's only one. I can click the plus to add a second, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. Uh, right now they're not going off screen. Let me use the splitter bar. Not splitter, it's a uh, defines width. We just talked about earlier, so let me make it a little bit wider and look what happened. Now all of a sudden the worksheets that are off screen, I can scroll like that, the worksheet tabs. But I'm going to make it wider and then these are disabled. Um, plus inserts worksheet tabs, right click. You can, well, we'll talk about that later. You can delete, you know, you can move or copy worksheets as well. But oh man, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, let's talk about them all. So tab color. There, I have a blue tab. Uh, I'm not going to talk about track sheet. I can talk about view code. I can copy or move. Well, to move it, literally, you just, well, I guess you can. Break. Yeah, there you go. So I click it. I wait until that little black triangle appears in the upper left, and then I can drag it. And that's how you move it. But you can also right click and do a move. But to copy, that's where I us really use that. I'll make it create a copy, move it to the end go. And now I have sheet four and then a two. Now you can right click and rename. I usually just double click and then type in the value. 
And then you can also delete the tab, or you can also select like four of them. Right click and delete all four of them. Now I'm back to the original, sheet one. But ironically, if I hit plus, it's gonna start at sheet seven, not sheet two. <laughs> oh well, you can always rename them. So now we're down to the bottom last screen element in the user interface, the status bar down here. And starting from the left, this is a little notification. It says it's ready, but if you have a giant spreadsheet with a lot of calculations going and you make a change and it takes it five or 10 seconds to calculate, you'll see calculating appear down here. And likewise, if there's any macro code running, you'd see this instead of just being uh, basically shaded lightly, it would be colored and show that it's running. Uh, these buttons here, I'm not, I can hover over them, page break preview, page layout, normal, just leave it on normal. I mean, sometimes maybe you need these, but I usually leave it on normal. Really the only use that I get out of this is the calculation sometimes, and sometimes an error, a message down here, and then the zoom window is always nice. Plus, it'll jump up by 10%, minus, it'll jump down by 10%, or you can just drag the thumb to zoom in or zoom out, and then you can always click back to get back to 10 10 percent. And I believe that wraps up the basic introduction to Excel. Thank you for watching and please if you found this video helpful click like and be sure to subscribe below.